Perhaps the basic caveat for all of us to consider is while we work to strengthen a rules-based global trading system, we must be cognizant of becoming bound to traditional ways of thinking that stifle productivity, boosting technology, or otherwise threaten to suffocate innovation. Instead, our aim should be to facilitate new and existing trends in the private sector. So we need to anticipate and act on trade issues that make or break the next big opportunity to fuel economic growth and create jobs. We think there are going to be a number of op uh, opportunities for the United States to help lead us in that direction in our upcoming negotiations relative to uh, the APEC, uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, and our pending free trade agreements. As many of you know, the United States will host the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum in 2011. As host country, we will seek outcomes to improve market access throughout Asia-Pacific, including for service suppliers by addressing generation, next generation trade issues like transparency, innovation, and competitiveness. Many of you are on the front lines of trade in Asia, and we look forward to working with you and solicit your help in how we can make it cheaper, easier, and faster to trade services in this fast-growing region. I'm also enthusiastic about the progress we're making on our negotiations on the Trans-Pacific Partnership. It was about this time last year at the APEC Summit in Singapore that President Obama announced the United States would engage uh, with the original seven partners to move forward on that. The simple reason, as you know, this is where most economists tell us over half the global GDP is going to occur in the next 10 to 20 years. And it is critical that the United States have a platform for our engagement in this region. We've had three rounds thus far. They've been extremely productive. All of the partners are committed to the same goal of achieving a high standard 21st century trade agreement that we hope will span this dynamic region, creating access for service providers, as well as seeking far-ranging benefits through provisions on investment, financial services, telecommunications, environmental goods and services, and others. Finally, we're also working at the President's explicit direction uh, to resolve the outstanding issues with the, outstand, uh, the uh, Korea Free Trade Agreement. After the conclusion of the G20 Summit in Canada, President Obama and President Lee expressly directed us to get to work to see if we can not present them something to consider when they meet in Korea uh, in November at the next summit. As you know, Korea's services market is valued at almost $60, $560 billion, and our two-way trade in services with Korea already exceeds over $20 billion, but you can see there is an extraordinary room for growth. The commitments in the U.S.-Korea Free Trade Agreement will provide new opportunities for service providers and workers in industries, and we look forward to resolving these by the G20 deadline. The President has also directed us in that same vein to move forward and try to resolve our outstanding issues with Panama and Colombia. Our simple rationale behind all of these agreements is notwithstanding the scale, we are going to fight for every job that's out there on the table in any configuration, bilaterally, regionally, multilaterally. So we've got a lot on our plate that sounds ambitious, but it's time. And so we will continue to seek your counsel and your thought on how we can move these forward. Now, I want to be absolutely clear. We are ready to consider serious proposals on services liberalization at any time. And we're going to keep pushing commitments for the principles of market access, transparency, and non-discrimination. But we can't wait for formal negotiations to, de to develop forward-thinking policy on trade and services. Because services is the fastest moving segment of our economy. You constantly evolve, so our trade rules and commitments related to services must evolve and mature as well. If you think about it, technologies like social networking, cloud computing, voice over, net in, voice over internet protocol were only in their nation stages of development when the Doha round began 10 years ago. So our trade dialogue has to keep pace with the dynamic services sector in order to maximize opportunities for economic growth and development. 
I just want you to know that every day at USTR, we're focused squarely on creating jobs for Americans, and we understand the critical role that our service sector plays in helping us meet that goal. We are partners in this cause together, and we are always grateful for the assistance, for the education, for the push that we get from industries like yours. And once again, I want to thank uh, Bill Tepeda and Bob Vasti and all the members of the of the uh, of CSI for the good work that you do. So thank you all, and we look forward to working with you.